All right, we're live. Hey, welcome back to another Unbridled Living in Costa Rica podcast. Hey, got some good stuff for you today because we're going to be talking about, hey, uh, how do you know when you found home? In other words, where's the best place to live in Costa Rica? There we go. All right. So how do you know where is the best place to live in Costa Rica? How do you know when you finally say, hey, I found my slice of paradise? Well, we're going to be talking all about that. But first, if this is your first time here, well, I'm Alan Richard, and this is my wonderful co-host, Rebecca. And we've been living in Costa Rica since 2016. We've practically been all over the place. 2013. Oh, well, somebody put the wrong thing up there. It says huh? 2016. <laughs> I had a typo. See, we're actually on Rebecca's computer because I've been gone all week. But anyway, before I get into all that, hey, I was as I was saying, we've been here since November of 2013. That's a little over 10 years. Been all over the place and really have just, you know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, there's there's nobody that knows and can tell you more about Costa Rica than Rebecca and I, and that's just simply because we've been all over. So, hey, appreciate all of you here. Hey, I see my wonderful friend over there, Pamela Till. Hey, Pam, we're so glad to see you. I hope Thomas is sitting next to you. I hope you got your popcorn and, and uh, Cold Island's apple juice ready to go. <laughs> hey, uh, if uh, if you're new on this channel, like I said, I'm Alan. This is Rebecca. And look, if you, you're you here, you're probably researching. You're trying to find out. You're trying to get information because there's a lot of misinformation on the Internet. No doubt about it. Um, and so, look, if you've got questions, we have answers. So if you look in the description uh, on almost any video, I hadn't put it in this video. I'm kind of behind. But anyway. Look in the description, almost any video, you can schedule your free phone consultation and we can uh, answer whatever questions you have. We can help you, you know, find out what is it you're looking for in Costa Rica and how we can help you find the right answers. So, hey, I see Roderick, Pamela, Randy uh, and Karen. I see a lot of people here. Uh, welcome. So let's get into the topic. But before we do, what's been happening on the off grid homestead? Well, again, you were gone all week, so nothing's been happening on the off-grid homestead. I've been doing the little bit of maintenance routine stuff that I can do, like filling up the water can and moving the sprinkler around and well, you know, I mean, water in the tomatoes. But you know, you've moved the sprinklers around a little bit, and not that she really has to. It, we are at the end of dry season. And uh, eventually, all the sprinkling systems will be automated. But at mm -hmm. the moment, you know, and really when she's moving the water around, True, it's just, just the, the overflow hose, water, yeah, you know, the, and mm -hmm. she just kind of moves it around. When, In other words, it gives her a chance to get out of the seat, stretch her legs and move stuff around and water stuff, you know. That's but right. um, hey, why don't you go get those berries? Let's, let's show them those berries. Oh, that I picked this morning. Yeah, I'll take. So, you know, I mean, it really is is neat to be on the off-grid homestead. Uh, it's really neat to, because, you know, hey, and, and maybe some of you want to do this, maybe some of you don't, but, you know, this place was nothing but a jungle, weeds and just stuff all over the place, you know, and so it's taken a lot of work, cleaning it up, moved, you know, no telling how many tons and tons of rocks, but we've taken time to just plant stuff and plant banana trees and plant plantains and, uh, you know, because nothing, none of that was here, but uh, take, a, take a quick look at this right here as I put this mic back on. You know, uh, I, this is probably what I like the best is, you know, enjoying the fruits of my labor. Take a look at that right there. Those are some mulberries. And look, I mean, to give you an idea how big these things are. Look, these are uh, some of the best tasting fruits around. Well, uh, you like the mulberries or you like the ice cream that you put them in? Well, the, the, uh, <laughs> the mulberries do make the ice cream taste better. <laughs> Uh, I've been told on. What's the matter with that woman? <laughs> anyway, look, ain't nothing better but put some vanilla ice cream on that right there and go to town. I'm yeah. going to have some of they that are, later. They are good berries, though. But anyway, you know, um, I, I've been gone. I've been helping a, uh, I've been helping a friend install a water system. Maybe y'all will see some videos on that a little bit later. But I have really been putting in a huge community uh, water system and, uh, and I've had a, a, a bunch of Ticos. The whole the whole com Tico community has been helping me. And here's what's amazing is they've been helping me for free. OK, so these Ticos are just an amazing family. And of course, they're all excited because I'm upgrading their water system. 
So anyway, that's what's been happening. Of course, that's not what's been happening on the off-grid homestead. I got my own water system, but I've been working on someone else's homestead, helping them develop their homestead. You're going to tell you them know? what you've been telling me? What have I been telling you? About how hard they're working. Oh, how much... I don't know if we're supposed to say people's names, but you know who I'm talking about, how much he's been helping you. Well, that's what I'm saying is that the whole family has just been uh, has been helping us a whole or helping me a whole, whole lot, you know, as I install their water system. So anyway, it has been it's been uh, it's been impressive because, you know, and you have to understand this and some Ticos won't agree with me, but I work right with the Ticos and the majority of the Ticos in the in this country. And where I'm at uh, are very, very, very poor. Uh, they are putting stuff together and making stuff work. And kudos to them that they're making it work. Now, I mean, they're seeing what I'm doing and I'm installing this system for them properly. Huge tank, everything. And they're so excited and so appreciative and, and they're loving what they're getting. And, and all uh, that costs a lot of money. It, though. It, it has cost a lot of money to set this up uh, for them. But anyway. Uh, enough about that. But anyway, it really has been a pleasure. And that's why, you know, we can really share more about Costa Rica than anyone else, because, hey, I'm I'm boots on the ground. Uh, I work with the Ticos hand in hand. And, you know, I get to I learn I know more about the culture of, of, of the Ticos in this country than I think anybody else, uh, just simply because we spend so much time with the people, the culture. You know, it, and we just love Costa Rica. But, hey, let's get in today's And it's topic. in the country, not in the city. So. Yeah, it is very, very, much, very, very far in the country. It's it's semi remote. It's not nearly as remote as I am. But hey, even in in the city, and so, I say not the city, like not San Jose, but you know, uh, in the majority of the rural areas, you get away from San Jose in the metropolitan area. You get away from any of the decent sized cities. Okay, you're gonna find Tico that areas. yeah. Get away from the tourist areas. What what we experience every day is what you would experience. We're talking about Ticos that are making under five hundred dollars a month. Where I'm at, these people they lucky if they're making uh, two hundred dollars a month. Okay, but they're farmers. They're farmers, and they're working all the time. Okay, so anyway, um, let's get into today's topic, and we'll be sure to answer questions as we're going on, going along. So today we're talking about where's the best places to live in Costa Rica, and really. Uh, Hey, let's ask Rebecca, because I bet she knows. Where is the best <laughs> place to live in Costa Rica? Well, it all depends. <laughs> so it depends on what you want. You know, I, I like to look at the ocean, but I don't care for the heat. I don't care for the, the sand, but I do like to look at the ocean. And um, I like cooler temperatures. So a good in-between would be a higher elevation that's not too far away from from the beach for me because uh certain parts of costa rica the beaches are far from the mountains in some places in some right? places some places you can be on the beach look up and see some mountains right right, right. some beaches like dominical have almost an immediate climb right? in, incline right you start to gain altitude fairly quickly um, leaving the beach going right. up the mountain road whereas other places um like playa del coco on um you, you might not ever find them right out. on the nicoya <laughs> peninsula guanacaste uh when you leave the beach you still stay in at sea level and it's still and hot, it's hot for a long hot. long way all over the place boy and yeah. seen some now stuff. that's the northern part that's of, the north, right which doesn't uh, even feel like costa rica yeah that's the northern part of uh the nicoya peninsula you go a little bit further down on the same peninsula and there's lots of mountains and you can like, see the gulf yeah like up there where we were in Carmona. Mm -hmm. um my goodness it was beautiful and the scenery the the views of the um i the mean you gulf can, from, from, there. from way up there you can look down and see yeah. what people typically called alligator island okay uh because from way up there it looked like a giant alligator in the gulf crocodile was it crocodile island Crocodile. I think it was Alligator Island. It's Probably crocodile. not. That might have been a Louisiana thing. That's that's a Cajun <laughs> thing, not a Tico thing. <laughs> yeah, Ticos ain't never seen no alligator. It they is. got crocodiles, it's crocodiles here. Crocodiles here. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you know, just the, the Nicoya Peninsula is a tiny piece of Costa Rica. Costa Rica is already small as it is, but this uh, Nicoya Peninsula is a tiny piece, and it has 
mountains and beaches and flat land. So just in that little area, there's a variety, different temperatures, different altitudes, different uh, weather systems. So long answer. But the problem, long answer, but the problem in the Koi Peninsula is that it's not as developed as a lot of other places. Because uh, it seems like it was kind of in that area, one of the last places for Ticos to go to, okay? Well, and it's very, so, it, the beaches have a lot of, it's a lot of tourism there. Down at the beaches around the beaches, Samara and stuff like that. But the middle of the, the country, the mountain, yeah. Yeah, the mm -hmm. middle of the country, um, especially towards the southern part, like you said, it's not that uh, developed. It's still very rural. Um, you can, gosh, we lived in the middle of a, a, a Tico family that right. owned a lot right. of land and we we're just on a, a portion of the land. Um, that was very nice and very safe. And uh, let's see, I see Doug is, no, not Doug, let's see, Homestead Ranger, Joshua, asking if the Nicoya is, um, is extremely dry. And I thought that it was. I mean, the times that we were there, I can't remember if we no, were part of rainy season or. <clears throat> kind of really depends because a Nicoya, it's kind of green, gets a good bit of rain. But what 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 he may have been hearing is as you go the northern part of Nicoya, that's right. That part is really really dry. Yeah, towards so you Liberia. get up to Tiamas, I mean, uh, uh, Tamarindo. Uh, you get up in that area, it's very very yeah. dry. But the Nicoya Peninsula itself, where it's mountainous, is is fairly green. And yeah, they have waterfalls water. and, and yeah. all of that. The southern part, but I found the the northern part like. Um, drying from Nicoya itself, the city of Nicoya, all the way up to uh, Liberia, was a very flat and dry area. A lot of cattle and farming, um, a lot of flat area. So me, you know, yeah. rather than preferring the mountains, um, that quickly, you know, even though we enjoyed our visit there, our stay there, uh, that's not where we wanted to yeah. settle. So that's like like she was saying, quite the long answer for I was like, well, where yeah. where is the best? But it place just it live? depends on where what you want, how you want to live, what conditions you really like. Some people really enjoy the heat of the beach and they like that. They like the salt air. Um, there's plenty what Costa Rica has uh, miles their, their and miles and miles just, of, of it's beaches, just right? all beaches. So kind of maybe going back to uh that original question you know because i was for sure she was going to say that this is the best place to live and of course in my opinion i think where we are is the best place but it goes back to what she was saying is that it really depends because you know hey uh, i'm sure 99 percent of the people that's uh watching this video would probably never live as far remote as we are because hey you're two hours away from the closest grocery store right? right so there is a handful of people that would want it but even if we were 10 minutes from the from uh, a grocery store you still wouldn't like it because you're a beach person but you know so that kind of goes back to saying that you know if you really really think you're a beach person well then make sure that you rent on the stinking beach or, or real close to the beach because i can almost guarantee you that uh, after six months of the dry season on the beach, you might quickly change your mind and say, I thought I was a beach person, but after shriveling up like a raisin and, and burning all the time, I decided to go for cooler weather. And so you start heading up the mountain. So, you know, there's almost almost any place in Costa Rica, almost any place, in my opinion, can be a great place to live. But here's here's the whole point of what we're talking about today is that whenever you come to visit Costa Rica. Hey, look, I know you're doing research, okay? And on YouTube, uh, you got these YouTubers who are trying to sell you the dream. They're trying to sell you Costa Rica. And of course, they're trying to sell you Costa Rica so that you can buy their product and their services, okay? So uh, you, you need to, and, and I say that because I, you need to, when you're watching a YouTube channel, you need to try to find out what's their ulterior motive, okay? Uh, because you want to find out are they giving you honest information? Not now. We've traveled all over the place, so we have hands-on experience, and we can tell you from our perspective what it's like. Uh, we never really have anything to sell other than you know we'll do relocation retreats from time to time, uh, and you can have you know one-on-one -on -one phone consultations. You know, but we're only selling you more information. You know, in order to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. But my point is, whenever you do come to Costa Rica, you know, uh, on YouTube. You see a lot, a lot of videos on 
the Tamarindo area because it's a very, very popular area. A lot of videos on Hako, very popular tourist area. Playa Hermosa, you know, you got these uh, Uvita. Well, don't don't be only thinking about going to just those popular places. Come to Costa Rica, spend a couple of weeks, and hey, I mean, I don't know that you ever see any videos out there other than ours that say visit San Isidro. And why is that? Well, we didn't start off talking about San Isidro. We started off, you know, talking about San Vito, where we were at, mm -hmm. uh, Las Juntas, you know. We went to all these different places, and we, you know, and our whole point, we did that on purpose to find out what we would like the best. And we really did like the San Vito area, but it was so difficult because uh, it was so, um, it wasn't remote, but it just wasn't. When you went shopping there, you didn't have a lot of selection. Uh, it, it just, it was very, very, lack of a better term, it was very undeveloped compared to San Isidro. It was a long ways from anything, okay? And so uh, after going, you know, all the way to Caribbean side, going to Nokoya Peninsula, being all over the place, then we were like, wow, San Isidro was really cool. And then we, we lived in several different places in San Isidro from being right close to town to being way over in the Rivas area and just living in several different spots to see, you know, the different areas. So, you know, so my, my point in, in this conversation, I got on several rabbit trails is to, you know, get outside the box, go experience it, travel around because almost any place is great. Now, keep in mind, let's say that you um, do find a great place. And let me back up because I saw a, a question here that someone asked. Oh, right here. Uh, Karen says, hey, can you please tell us a little bit about Gracia and San, San Ramon? Now, when you ask a question like that, you almost have to tell me which one. Uh, but And I think you're talking about the, uh, the, the Gracia and the San Ramon that's right there close to San Jose. So you correct me if I'm wrong. You tell me, and then and then I'll answer that question, Karen. Okay. Uh, but Costa Rica, uh, <laughs> man, there's like two San Isidros that I know of. Uh, but there's a lot of La Fortunas, and and but there's only one very very popular La Fortuna. Anyway, so you 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 kind of have to help. There's me a out lot there. of Santa Teresa. Yeah, a lot of the same the same, same names stuff, right? over and over. Yeah. So anyway. Um, uh, so, so let me know that. And let me answer this question real quick here that, uh, whoops. Oh, she said, you're correct. Okay. Well, great. So yes, in that area now, Rebecca and I intentionally, while we have traveled through that area, we intentionally have not stayed anywhere close to the San Jose and metropolitan area. And we did that on purpose yeah, because now, now we've stayed overnight. We've stayed and maybe overnight a couple several days, times, you but, know, but we've never stayed, never lived you know, because when we say that we've lived all over the place and I say lived all over the place, we have lived in over 25 different places. And when we say lived while well, we were there for three months or more, okay, to experience that all those areas. So we've, while we've spent the night and traveled through San Jose and those areas, we've not lived in those areas intentionally because, well, anytime that you get in the city, I don't want to live in the city, but you get outside those areas where you're talking about, okay, it's not so city, but you're kind of, you know, 30 minutes from the city, easy shopping and all that. The altitude's higher. It's nice and cool, okay? Uh, but I don't want to be where there's a lot of expats. Anytime there's a lot of expats, prices are higher. Anytime you're closer to uh, the metropolitan area, San Jose metropolitan area, the cost of living is higher. And when we came to Costa Rica, we wanted to be in the rural areas. So unfortunately, Karen, I can't give you probably all the information you want. Uh, while I, I just could pretend know that it, it's very and I can popular. lie to you, I won't do that. Okay. Yeah, but maybe we'll ask Rebecca too. No. <laughs> but it's a very popular area. So it that's got to say something for how how nice it is um it, so it's a desirable area uh being close to the airport close to shopping the temperatures are great every time that we've stayed in um san jose the temperatures are, are wonderful and uh when we're driving in the area you know we look up i'm sure those areas that we see the houses in the mountains mm -hmm. that's the yeah and the see, area that and, they're and talking about now and, now you did say because there's a lot of people, it might be in a testament that it's a good place and could be and couldn't be because a lot of expats, keep in mind, 
a lot of expats live close to that area for one reason. Uh, or, well, I'll say two. One reason, well, maybe three. Okay, <laughs> one is that it's close to an airport and they want to travel and go back and forth. Two, because of their age and their retirement or older in years, they want to be close to, to better hospitals, okay? And three, because they want to uh, be close to, you know, eat a, a, an abundance of shopping. Because it can be a challenge to find things when you're in Costa Rica, unless you go to San Jose. So I always tell people, look, if you want to, right, enjoy raw Costa Rica and really kind of enjoy the real Costa Rica, well, then don't live anywhere. Because, you know, as we teach on our channel and share information, the majority of the stuff we say, we try to remember we to say does not apply to San Jose and the metropolitan area. If you live there, you haven't experienced Costa Rica. It's very, very, very different, okay? You haven't so, experienced the rural. Yeah. The Right. And, you know, with something we were talking about this morning, um, pertaining to shopping you know we we talk about how sometimes like uh the toilet won't um in a hotel or an airbnb the toilet won't flush properly you got to jiggle the handle or take the lid off and or pull the string and, and, and do uh, whatever but as we were discussing it is because if you go to the hardware store in a lot of these little areas they might have one kind of uh guts for the toilet right one brand one kind you and know so it might, well so it's different for us we we go to home depot or lowe's or whatever in the states and you have like 30 different uh kinds of guts for the toilet because they have all, all the, the different, different makers right so they're doing with what is available a lot of people more people now have cars but a lot of people didn't have um vehicles, cars right. 10 years and ago or whatever right and yeah. so who wants to take a six hour bus ride from San Bito to, to go, go buy, get a uh, yeah. guts for your toilet. Right. But, while so, but you're it's on something that, to consider yeah. is that that's what we didn't like about San Bito. It was the, the it was shopping, difficult to find right. find stuff. Yeah, And it was right? six hours away from San Jose. Mm -hmm. See, but while as far as the territory, the, yeah. ter the temperature, oh my goodness. You know, and while wonderful. you're talking about the toilet situation, because you know, I'm staying in a hotel right now, uh, I'm going to actually do a video on it because and, and I'd like to get your input because uh, because I know no one's done a video like this. And it's to show you what a real hotel in Costa Rica is like. What is the a non tourist? Pura, yeah. A, what would be the Pura Vida, Pura Vida experience in a real Tico hotel? OK, uh, because I know some of you, as soon as you walk in that hotel, you'd be like. Oh, MG, I could not stay here, you know, and so it's very different. Is that, does that, am I saying something bad about it? No, I'm not. Uh, but to give you a little hint, it's the reason that Costa Rica has been voted as one of the happiest countries in the world. All right. They don't care if the curtains don't match. They don't care of the big ants that you were talking about. Um, that was coming in at nighttime, toting me off. <laughs> <laughs> running around because, you know what, they, they try to protect the environment. So they're not going around with the bug spray, you know, and, and things like that. So Now, Nancy has a, a, a real good question as we continue talking. And she says, hey, where would be the best place for a solo woman, mid-50s, three dogs, whom doesn't want city living, wants more of a relaxed life closer to nature? Hey, that's an easy answer because we've been to a lot, a lot of places. And it sounds like to me from just that little statement, if I were you, I would be going anywhere in the Paris Zeladon area, which San Isidro is the heart. OK, and let me so for all of you listening. Here's one of the reasons that you would love it. OK, well, there is a big Walmart and a lot of people. I don't like Walmart. Well, you'll love Walmart when you're in Costa Rica because I didn't like Walmart in the United States either because. For me, it takes away from the from all of the little businesses. But in Costa Rica, it still takes away from the little businesses. But, you know, when Rebecca has 10 things on her shopping list and she's got to go to 20 stores to get them, you immediately love Costa, uh, Costa Rica Walmart because you can find everything. So, it's one-stop shopping. Yeah, one-stop shopping. They still don't have the selection like the United States Walmart. So, you know, don't think that you're coming to a U.S. Walmart. Right. So but it's still it different. Is way but it, way better yeah. um it's covered parking so in rainy season with the downpour um you know and and you can roll the cart all the way to the car right you know i've talked about and, and that got, on, on and they've got guards you know security guards out there all the time so you never have to worry about uh you yeah. know someone breaking into your car or having the 
uh, guys who are uh, self-appointed security guards watching your car. And then he's like, I watch your car. Pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me. I watch your car. <laughs> so yeah. anyway. But they're, they're, those they, people they, are they, happy with whatever you give them. They're happy with whatever you give them. You don't have to give them a $20 tip yeah, every just, time. You know, a few I mean, coins and they're happy because yeah, they're happy. it's just their way of making money. But sometimes I, when I first got here, I was really leery. So anyway, my point is uh, that would be a great place, San Isidro, Parazella Don area. Good hospitals. Uh, you really, you know, you it's 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 a good. Yeah. That's where I would and start off if I were you, Nancy. I'm excited about the Pequeno. The Pequeno Mondo. Mondo. It is similar to um, a Sam's in in the U.S. You know where it's uh, you can buy bulk stuff and find stuff that I don't know where they're getting all their stuff from, but man, they have stuff that I can't it, find. Well, it's, it's very similar to going to Sam's because they got so much stuff there. Now, Pequeno Mundo is considered a a Costa Rica version of Walmart, but it really looks more like a Sam's or a Costco's. You know, it's got big, big yeah, stuff. Yeah, similar to Costco's too. So that was very nice to get that here in, um, you know, it's only once we get down the mountain, it's only now, an hour away. But I, I would also say... Um, uh, the best place to me to start for Nancy would be around uh, the San Isidro area. However, she may eventually like um, San Bito because the close proximity to shopping at uh, Panama, if you just go right there to the border and it's not nearly like shopping in San Isidro, it doesn't have as much selection, but um, you are still about an hour, um, like, in, from San Vito, it's like 15 minutes from the border. Mm. But if you drive an hour and a and half, a half yeah. down the mountain and then you Through know the head woods, south, the grandma's house, then yeah. you'll be in Pascanoa. Yeah. And Pascanoa has a uh, city mall and it, it's almost like shopping yeah. in the U.S. So keep that in mind, Nancy. What she was saying is, is in San Vito, they do have a good hospital there. There's not a lot mm -hmm. of good shopping. You would have to go to the border of Panama, which is about an hour away. And uh, you can, and, but, but, but the plus, while it's an hour away, you can get stuff so, so, so cheap over there. Okay. I, I say cheap. It's not going to be half the price, it's but it's going to be close to that. So that is a thought. Glad yeah. you brought that up. For fuel and everything, it almost makes up for the six hours of being away six hours away from the, uh, the, from the airport. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you're not planning to fly out, that much um and now with the 180 day tourist visas you really only need to leave the country like twice yeah. a year now pamela asked uh pam asked a good question she says is that a membership i'm sure she was referring to pequeno mundo no it's not mm -hmm. while it looks and feels like a sam's or a costco it's not a membership you can go in there and get everything you want they do have a big big store it's called price smart and price smart is just like Costco's, but it's membership, okay? And where prices are indeed yeah. a lot cheaper. Yeah, in fact, you get a lot of members mark stuff at um, Price Smart. Yeah. But that's in San Jose. It's not available here. Yeah. I hope now, San Isidro doesn't grow too much more. Yeah, I, if... <laughs> I did hear rumor that they were going to be putting in a Price Smart in San Isidro. For real? I did. I did hear rumor that. That's just wow. rumor at this point. Okay. That's just rumor. Now, Doug did say something as we were talking about the toilets. He says, yeah, you know, toilet parts very greatly. And he had to look in several hardware stores to actually find it, which kind of reminded me because I saw that. And he says it, it was just a regular style box and it was in the back room shelf for probably years. <laughs> you know, he probably had to wipe off an inch of dirt on it, you know, but that's just part of living in Costa Rica. Yeah. I mean, right now in the hotel I'm in, uh, talking about how hard it is to find parts, right? Obviously, they replaced the guts in the toilet, couldn't find the right size. They they had to replace the ball valve that goes up and down in there. And it was so big that now when you try to flush the toilet, you got to jiggle the handle because the lever gets in the way of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's probably Vita, that's all they can it's find. It's functional. It yeah. works. You know, so anyway, it, it's just, it's it's part of the challenges of being in Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, unless you live somewhere around uh uh, San Jose. It's easier yeah. to find stuff and in you know, that area. What I like about um, the the Pequeno Mondo and Walmart and, and those type stores in these in uh, San Isidro is it's so well organized and so well lit. You know, like lighting and um, the organization and the selection is so much better uh, in the little small stores. Where at are you talking about? Well, just in the rural areas uh -huh. of Costa Rica, the little small stores, 
Remember when we were looking for a generator and I found one in the clothing department? In the clothing department. Because the stores are small. And so they're not real sectioned or organized. You know, like I said, literally a generator under the rack of clothes. You that know, was for sale. That was for sale. Yeah, it was. So, it. so I, mean, I was like, you, you look, could... I was like, hey, look, there's a generator because we were shopping for one. And um, it, it's just hard to uh, to find stuff. But that's a little thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, a it's a thing. challenge to find stuff. But you when you when you live in those areas, you begin to find the little hacks. Right. Uh, and I say anywhere in coast, great place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you've got to buy stuff, well, then just say, OK, put it on your shopping list. Put it on your shopping list. Put it on your shopping list, and then say, "Okay, let's go to San Jose for the day," mm -hmm. and just you know, schedule an Airbnb in San Jose. Right. Go to San Jose, stay a couple of nights, go shopping, buy everything that you need, you know, and put it in your vehicle and come back. Yeah. And, and that's why the shopping isn't that big of an of an issue. Okay. Every, things yeah. that you need every day, you know, unless you're, <laughs> if if you are really really stuck with, on your particular brands, you know buyer beware you're not going to find your brands here yeah you it's going to be totally different yeah. now uh homestead ranger has a good question while we were talking about san vito and he says well hey how does san vito compare to san isidro for safety and friendliness of the locals okay so this is a two-part question okay for safety it's going to be the same as long as you use common sense, you go move down to San Vito and you drive around in a golf cart. Nothing screams uh, gringo with too much money and no sense than to be riding around in a Harley Davidson or a golf cart. OK, hey, use some common sense. Don't be flashy. OK, and you're safe anywhere in Costa Rica. OK, San Vito seems to be a little safer. The reason it's a little safer. Stop and think about this. You go anywhere in Costa Rica, the fewer gringos there are the safer you are. Uh, you know, you got rotten people all over the world, okay? And so if you're going to have some thug decide to rob anybody, it, and he's got a choice to go to the gringo and rob someone he knows has money, or go to a Tico and rob someone, who do you think he's going to choose? Okay, you answer, you answer the question. He's going to choose you, okay? You're so, still pretty much safe every anywhere from bodily harm. There are the occasional you know, murders, uh, killings over theft when someone fights back or, or whatever, but it's rare. The but important thing is websites to... websites that you yeah. can go to and find all yeah. those statistics you know, the, the for The important areas. thing is, is look, uh, if, you, if you're in an area that you're afraid of, hey, you put your fence around it, you get your one big bad dog, uh, you put up signs that says video camera, uh, and you put up a couple of cameras, even if you don't, you know, fake cameras, if you don't want to spend the money for real cameras, and that'll solve 90% of yeah. your problem right and there. I always felt very safe in San Vito, Sabalito, that whole area. It's a lot of, uh, it's rural, it's uh, a lot of families, uh, very family oriented. Now, here's what was neat. Although Costa Rica is changing. Costa Rica is changing, but here's what was neat. Um, and look, it's just real. It's part of it. And, and the reason I say that is because um, World Language Schools there, Professor Carlos is putting up an, uh, uh, how do you call it? He's he's throwing up his own ad, okay? So he, he's not, he ain't scared to say, hey, if you'll learn Spanish with Professor Carlos, uh, you can avoid gringo pricing. I don't agree with you at all on that, Professor Carlos. But it does help to learn Spanish. But your uh, avoid gringo pricing comment there made me think that, you know, you, you're going to have gringo pricing all over Costa Rica. It's part of it. When we were in San Vito, we experienced a lot of gringo pricing. What was really neat was when the locals found out we were now locals and we were living there, we weren't getting the gringo price That's nearly right. as much. When they thought that we were just there temporarily, like just... Um... I don't know. Staying yeah, they thought we were just vacationing, just vacationing for a little while. We got the the gringo price, but you're right. That and that was very. They accepted us um, as one of their own. Yeah. We started getting the regular price. Now there was one restaurant didn't like him at all. That dude was just greedy. He gave us a gringo price every single time we went. Well, we quit going there. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy so, fix. But, yeah, so anyway, but, th that is going to be yeah. part of uh, adapting and adjusting to Costa Rica. Yeah, the grocery stores that we frequented asked us, you know, they gave us the little membership um, number, ID number, so that we could get discounts just like locals. Yeah. So uh, I loved San Vito. If it wouldn't be just so far from everything, 
um, San Vito, Sabalito is where we, we spent more time. And that is like just a... Yeah, Sabalito just seemed to be the a whole lot I love cleaner, that didn't it? Oh, yeah. Clean. I mean, it was, it was the mayor of San Vito and Sabalito was the same, but it just seemed like in Sabalito, the people just seemed to have more of a pride uh, for their town. And it just was seemed so yeah. much cleaner. Yeah. Between being clean, um, just nice, nice people. Okay. So uh, back on that topic. So what did he ask about? He asked about oh, oh, safety oh. and what uh, was the other thing? It was thing? a two-part question. Sorry about that. He said safety and friendliness oh. of the locals. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, they almost equal with uh, what? Go ahead. No. Yeah, you can say your piece after I say my piece. No, you say your piece first. Go ahead. Tell them what you think. What, with the friendliness? Yeah. I, I, answer the friendliness thing because I'm, I'm going to go on a little well, rant. Well, San Isidro, even though it is a, a a city, it's a small city, and I find it is still very friendly. There's certain terror areas you got to stay away from, but um, and the friendliness, the people are very, very friendly. I find that uh, everybody is very friendly. And uh, same in San Vito and Sabalito. They're almost equal, except that San Isidro has a few more like city areas that I, you kind of have to mm -hmm. stay away from, like maybe where the the clubs are, you know, or um, where there's some uh, gambling stuff going on, you know, just stay so clear I'm gonna of go those a, areas. I'm going to go on a little rant, but first I want to answer William's question here and then come back to finishing up yours, Homestand Ranger. But William was agreeing with us a while ago. He said it took a while after seven years. One spot I know, uh, it, it was a little different. He says the first six months, people looked at him like an ATM machine. And that's true. All over Costa Rica, the Tico is going to look at you like an ATM machine. They want a piece of the pie or all of it. OK, but eventually what he's saying, if I understand him right, after the first six months, they began to realize that he was a part of the community and was much more accepted there, which is, you know, uh, yeah. which, hey, that's that's normal in Costa Rica. I mean, uh, where I'm working at right now, OK, where I'm working at right now in that little bit of community, the Tico's there uh, weren't very trusting of me. They were like, who's that gringo over here doing all this work, you know? And uh, they, but they were very non-trusting. Well, I'm okay? sure they've heard a lot of bad things about gringos. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. If, they, if they watch US TV, which we know that they do, uh, you know, can you imagine being judged by the television shows right. that play? <laughs> well, so my, my point is, you know, they, they were very leery of me. But after having worked there for several weeks, uh, now they invite me in. Every day we go to someone's house to eat dinner. So I'm eating at the brother's house one day. I'm eating at mom and daddy's house the next day. I'm eating at sister's house the other day. I'm eating at the son's house every day. And it's like every time we turn around, we got to take a break, have coffee and something to eat. I can't eat that much. <laughs> but my point is, okay, so uh, let me go back to what Homestead Ranger was asking, okay? Because he's like the friendliness of the locals, okay? Some of you people are not going to agree, but hear me out, okay? I've always said that Ticos are not friendly, okay? Don't shut don't shut me down just yet. I've always said they're not friendly, okay? You've always heard how the Ticos are the friendliest people in the world, the friendliest people in the world, the friendliest people in the world. And the reason you hear that is all the Tico, I mean, all of the gringos, they come down here, they're in these touristy areas. Uh, and when they're touristy areas, at every single tourist area, every single tourist area, all Ticos are very, very, very friendly. Well, of course they are. They're in a touristy area. They're looking for a tip. They're looking for a handout. You're a tourist. You're a tourist. Give me, give me, give me. And they're very, very friendly there. Okay. Now, hear me out. So all these videos about how all the Ticos are friendly, 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 friendly. And so we came here. I expected the Ticos to be friendly. Well, we didn't go to a touristy area. We was in San Vito. And do you remember when we were on that motorbike? And we would drive around and we would pass by. I mean, we'd, the Ticos love to sit on their porch. We'd pass by on a motorbike. We would wave and we would get this. Yeah, but I, I've told you that's not their culture. They don't wave. Right. They right. toot the horn on the roads and they will invite you to stop and Well, and wait, wait, wait. I'm not with done with them. my rant. I'm not done with my rant. Okay, all the videos say how friendly they are, but I'm judging friendliness by my culture. My Thank culture. Thank you. Oh, you didn't let me finish the <laughs> okay, rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm judging the Ticos by my culture. See, I'm a Cajun, 
and in in South Louisiana, man, look, all the all the Cajuns, all they want to do is is drink a cold Island's apple juice. I mean, it's even popular down there. <laughs> And they all are waving. They all are waving. I mean, they don't know you from Adam. And everybody in South Louisiana, Texas, they're waving, okay? In Costa Rica, they're not waving. They they looking at you, you know? Now, whenever you, let's say that you're walking at the park and you talk to someone or you ask somebody for help, they, they anybody can be what I call social. They're, they're, they're friendly to your face. They're social. So, so when you meet them for the first time, the reason I go on that rant, and when you meet them, you'll be like, they ain't friendly at all. Well, it depends on where you're from. If you're from Jersey, you're going to find out these people are friendly. <laughs> so it all depends. So hey, anyway, that was a long rant to answer your question, Homestead Ranger. Yeah. But hey, um, it's safety and friendly to people pretty much everywhere. I'm, well, I'm going to ask Rebecca this question. Almost anywhere in Costa Rica, the people are the same, except where? On the Caribbean side. On the Caribbean side. <laughs> yeah, if different. you go on the Caribbean side, you have not visited it's Costa Rica. It's a different culture. It's a. It's just. It's different. It's very different. It's different. Why? Why? Caribbean why side. is? Because I've said it, but you say it. Why is it different on the Caribbean side? There's a lot of um, Jamaican influence. Um, what's that? I'm trying to remember the islands that are right there. They brought a lot of people in. On that side to help it's just jamaican influence no i can't think of the the caribbean islands but it's the caribbean islands and you're gonna stop with that and but on this side it's more i think she's just racial it's more uh european influence no. on this side <laughs> so on the caribbean side you've got a lot of african-american jamaican people no, not no. being racial it's not, not african american there is african-american is is okay, from well, America. I, well, you, okay, okay, well, African. What? And on the on the Caribbean side, you have Africa, a lot from... more black people or very dark skinned people, not being racial, not being prejudiced. I've got some really great black friends. Okay, no, no, no the reason I know they're black is because of the color. Okay, so anyway, but my point is that it you have this uh, African American or. No, it ain't African American. Anyway, it's Jamaican, like I said. Well, it's it's not just the, Jamaican though, because most Jamaicans aren't black. Well, it's the food and the culture, and well, the, like the music. It's, it's not about the color no. of their skin. It's well, a no, different it's, culture. Well, no, it's just a very different culture there. So, if you love Bob Hart Marley, you're gonna love the Caribbean side. It's it's got a very Bob Marley experience there. It's a very very different experience, and you know. So, since we're on this topic. In Costa Rica, if you're a black person wanting to come to Costa Rica, great come because the majority of the Ticos are not racial at all toward uh, black people with a different color skin. OK, now they are very racial toward Panamanians. They're very racial toward uh, indigenous people, but they're not racial toward black people. However, for whatever reason, there's just not that many black people on the Pacific side. But we find that a lot of black people. Um, end up on the Caribbean side. Maybe it's just because they like the culture there more than they like the Pacific side. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there because I like everybody to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, or what what we have experienced while we were there. Do yeah. you agree? Yeah. It's. I don't find that, I don't think that um, like people move, move there. It's just that's, the culture was um, indigenous you know it, it was they, like they the, had a lot of indians well, they, all and over they Costa still, Rica. right but the caribbean side still has a lot of um indigenous people um their ancestors from the uh aztec and the mayans and so a lot of the um the artifacts you know they still are making a lot of things and doing a lot oh, of it's really neat to see because the indians would set up some of their stands and all of their crafts right. and so there's a lot of that on that side more so i find than on on this side. on this side than on the pacific side and then the caribbean influence with the the jamaican type uh foods uh mm -hmm. different spices um the food is very spicy it, it was it was very very different culture. and the music yeah. was very different um yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Jamaican music it's versus just Jamaican music versus the regular. Yeah. Now, um, 
Here's a good question that uh, Roderick and Angela say. You know, what is your experience with earthquakes in Costa Rica? So Costa Rica has tons and tons and tons of earthquakes or little tremors almost on a daily basis. Okay. It's on a volcanic um, fault line. Yeah. So, <laughs> the whole... but uh, I mean, we've been here 10 years and I think uh, out of the 10 years we've been here, I've only felt maybe a handful that you could just really feel. And it was, wasn't anything. I mean, while a couple of things kind of moved on the shelf, nothing really got knocked down. Right. We've not experienced anything. I mean, I've, I have felt the the place shake. Yeah. But um, what's more of a threat and something to consider when you deciding where to live is um, the landslides. We've talked about that before. Don't go build your house on the base of at the base of a mountain that has cattle, cattle above all it up above you because right. the cattle tear. You know, they they deforest. Uh, for the cattle, they the cattle then tear up the ground. They make all those little tracks, and then when you get those torrential rains, that landslides happen. Yeah. And um, we do know. Um, so landslides are, are, are the biggest buried. thing that you need to be worried about when buying a piece of property and building. So you always want to be concerned. Okay, well I like this piece of property. Look up, and you know, is there a big cattle farm up uh, above you that could put potentially landslide down. Yeah. Now, it's not just cattle places that landslide. Yeah, also, you do have forests and jungles, okay? But uh, that's more of a threat than than yeah. earthquakes. And and his next question is, what about the effects of active volcano smoke in cities nearby? You know, there's we've had uh, volcanoes, you know, uh, smoke and stuff. Never seemed to affect anybody that I know of, you know. Well, um, they did have um, ash. Did have some had ash come down, but the, wasn't um, much, right? It had to close the airport for a couple of days. But in the 10 years, that's only happened like maybe twice that I know right. of. Right. But sometimes stuff happens that we don't know about. So. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, uh, vile, uh, vile money. You can give me some of that vile money. I'll take it. Anyway, <laughs> it says, can prefab cabins be shipped to Costa Rica? Are there local contractors and architects that specialize in the process? So, yeah, you can ship anything you want if you're willing to pay that kind of money for it. OK, so. Yes, you, you know, you can have anything shipped. Now, are there local contractors, architects? Probably not. The majority of the locals, okay, that that build, uh, their number one thing that they're, the best experience is everything that's concrete, okay? Uh, now, when you get into the San Jose area, you get a few people that uh, know more about light metal and steel, but uh, all over Costa Rica, their number one most favorite thing is is building with concrete. Uh, and I don't agree with it, and I don't even like it, but that's just the facts. Okay. Yeah. Now there's new materials, those uh, those panels <coughs> that are lighter prefab, weight. Yeah, those prefab, are prefab. Yeah, panels. you've got to go to San Jose, though. I think pretty much to get um, so to they, get they, those. You know, they have a whole lot of prefab concrete houses. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's so the question you're asking. I, I, yes, you can, but you, it's very hard to find contractors that know anything other than the usual now you go over in the very very tourist areas like tamarindo there's people that are doing light metal and stuff uh in san jose you know but once again like i said if you're around touristy areas or you're around uh san jose you're not experiencing costa rica uh it is hard to get those people to come to where you're at to build but hey you could contact them and find out uh, but there are a lot of prefab house builders, but those prefab house builders uh, are generally prefabbing concrete houses. There's a lot of different types of prefab concrete houses that they build in Costa Rica. And look, some of these uh, prefab concrete houses, uh, Costa Rica, Costa Rica will give away houses normally called bono houses. Uh, bono houses are given to very poor people. They only have to have a piece of property, meet the requirements uh, to be granted one of these. And the government will put up a prefab concrete house and it's the bare minimum. I mean, it's just the walls, the windows. It'll have a roof, no ceiling, no electric, no water. You got to put you got to put some skin in the game. You got to do the water and the electric, but it will have windows, doors and a roof uh, and even a septic tank. OK. So, uh, but that's, that's the general prefab stuff. Okay. I uh, guess the, the biggest piece of advice um, <coughs> that we've shared before is to rent, just to rent first, find out. 
um, yep. what's in your area, what's available in, the, you know, well, that's, a, that's a, stuff is changing all the time. You well, know, all you know, the time. Our topic today is how do you find the best place to live? Okay. And as we talk about the best place to live, you know, what you've got to first decide for yourself, are you a mountain person, a beach person? Do you want to be somewhere in between? And so you've got to decide where you want to be at and then go rent there for a while. Yeah. And okay. Costa Rica offers an abundance of both of those. Right. A beaches ton of them. and mountains. So. so find out what, what it is that you know and then go live there for three months. Live there for six months. If you don't like that area, go to another area. Uh, for example, we came to this spot the very first month we were in Costa Rica. Absolutely fell in love with it. Cost way too much money. And we left. And we went all over Costa Rica trying out different spot, different spot, different spot, different spot. And uh, we'd come here and visit a whole lot. Every time we came back to visit, we were always in love with it, always in love with it. OK, uh, right now where I'm uh, putting in a community water system, putting in a community water system, the uh, elevation is almost the same there as it is here. However, where I'm at here, it's a lot cooler. We get a lot more wind. And so where I'm at over there, which is the mountains around Parazeladon, it's not nearly as cool, but the elevation is almost the same. OK, so you have to you can't just assume that, oh, look, it's four thousand seven hundred feet and it's going to be nice temperature. No, the temperature there could be a little different. And what does affect the coolness here is that we do have a microclimate, which does affect the atmosphere here yeah. so lots of things river. for you to think about okay i think the the water the uh, water makes a makes huge a difference. difference right just like in rivas yeah in rivas, rivas there was abundance of uh rivers there and so um, it stayed cool that was one of my favorite places too yeah rivas. because you know when, well just like rivas uh we lived in morazan and that area in morazan was a lot cooler <clears throat> because there was a river right there. So with that river constantly going there, and I guess it evaporating, it just felt like the area was a lot cleaner, okay, or, or, or a lot cooler, okay? So anyway, just to, to give you an idea. So uh, now real quick, because Homestead asked this question. He says, have you had problems with building codes and regulations, and do inspectors come and check on you or give you fines? Okay, so <clears throat> just a quick answer on that. Uh, when you do decide to build, you have to hire an architect and a builder. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. The architect does all the architect, and it's his job to get you all of the uh, permits and everything that you need. And the architect is the one that's supposed to do the inspectors, uh, the inspection. So it's not like the United States. You normally are never going to have problems because the architect that you hired is the one inspecting the builder who you hired because the architect comes up with the design. He does all the permits. You hire the builder. The builder comes in, does the work. I like to say they like peas and carrots. They like peanut butter and jelly because you hire the architect and you say, hey, do you know a good builder? He recommends his buddy. They are working together and you almost never have a problem with uh, on the spot inspections giving you fines because if the builder is not building it right, the inspector's like, you didn't do that right. And the builder's going like, here you go. Oh, it's okay now. I'm not saying that happens every single time. It does happen a lot. And that's why you've got to be very, very careful to have a good builder in Costa Rica because things just get slid underneath the carpet, okay? So it's not a big problem in Costa Rica like you might be saying compared to wherever you're from, Homestead Ranger. So I hope I answered that question. But let's get back to, because we're getting close to that last hour. How do you know? Because here's the answer that, that you know, I, I alluded to. Where's the best place to live in Costa Rica? And how do you know when you found your slice of paradise? How do you know when you have found home in Costa Rica? Rebecca, how do you know when you have found home in Costa Rica? I don't know how to explain that. I do know that when I go back to the U.S. and visit, I'm ready to come back. Well, that's one pretty dang good indicator <laughs> that uh, so it's like Louisiana is not home anymore. No, I can't wait to get back. I mean, I love my seeing my family and everything, but um, but whenever you come here, I come you're back. like, matter of fact, when we go to the United States to visit family, I mean, we're there a couple of days and we're ready to go home. We're ready to go. You know, we we knew this was home because every we, time we, we want came them to, to visit, come see us. right, we want them to come here. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, uh, I've done I've done four relocation retreats 
every single time we've gone to the relocation retreat, uh, with nice hotel. I mean, great swimming pool, good food, but you beautiful know what? Beach, <laughs> beautiful beach, pristine walking up and down it. But I can't wait to leave that beach and come to my home. You know, I'm working right now at a similar area as over in the Parazeladon area. I leave a couple of days. I'm staying in a hotel. I can't wait to come back home. I mean, every time we go shopping, I can't wait to come back home. You know, uh, and, and here's the key to this thing. Almost anywhere in Costa Rica can feel like home, but it only happens because I have to I have to admit to you, folks, that the first eight years in Costa Rica, uh, man, it was a challenge. Every single day was a challenge. And you and you need to tell yourself that when you first come to Costa Rica, every single day is going to be a challenge because when you're renting, you can't control uh, the neighbor who has 15 dogs and they're barking. You can't control the other neighbor who has a 15 year old girl and they're having a party. And every Friday night they got a party. It's 10 o'clock at night. You're trying to sleep and you can't sleep for all the noise. And then they're playing it all the time and they turn it up loud because they're doing you a favor. You don't have to play your music. You can listen to theirs. I mean, so the key thing is, you know, when you're renting and you're trying to discover your slice of paradise, you can't see why E control your environment. After eight years, we came here. Well, guess what? I don't have any. The closest neighbor is uh, a quarter mile away. OK, a mile away. You know, I don't. And, I, and, and we can control our environment here. I don't have 15 barking dogs. Uh, I don't have uh, neighbors. So you're thinking, oh, well, that's OK, Alan. I'll buy a piece of property. And I'll put a fence all the way around it and I'll be able to control my environment. Nobody will be able to come on my back porch and steal my tennis shoes and steal all my stuff like I've heard you say before. That's true. You can put a fence around. Uh, you can put security cameras. You can have a big bad dog. Uh, but you can't control the neighbor who, who, when you first moved in, he didn't have chickens. But now he's got chickens and he's got three roosters that start crowing at three o'clock in the morning. OK, you can't control the neighbor on the other side who, well, he started with one dog. It got pregnant and he kept all the puppies. So you have to keep all those things in mind that, you know, in Costa Rica, they don't complain about the 15 barking dogs. They don't complain about the roosters. That's all normal. And, you know, it's it's a it's a very laid back, a very they just put a V to everything. And look, I'm not that's not a bad thing. That's the reason that the country has been voted as one of the happiest uh, mm -hmm. people in the world. But is if, that they're just you, very laid back. If you think you're going to do like in the United States and call the police and report the the noise level because it's after 10 o'clock, <laughs> that, that doesn't that that doesn't happen here. That's not you know, you, you pretty much just stuck with whatever the situation is. So that's right. It makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. You, you can call the police uh, and you can report them. But what ends up happening is you end up causing more problems for yourself yeah. in the long run. And it's accepted in this culture. So to, that's what we're trying to say. Don't don't think you're going to come here and change the culture. You have to either adapt or if, if you don't like that, then live somewhere, you know, find your piece of paradise that you're not subjected to um, to those things. Yeah. Uh, and um, hey, take a look at uh, uh, Deborah. Uh, Deborah has been watching our channel for a very, very long time. She says, hey, guys, glad to see you again. Uh, and she said she found an area because of us. OK, way back. And she actually threw in a comment about the prefab house and said that she bought a prefab kit house from San Jose with metal insulated panels, which is what you were talking about earlier. Right. So you can find those kinds of uh, uh, prefab houses. But it's like I said, right, San Jose and that metropolitan area. But we don't normally talk about that because we don't live there intentionally. But you can not almost find anything there. Uh, it's a little bit different. But hey, thanks so much, Deborah, for throwing that comment up. OK, yeah. so um, Deborah, did you have um, local people? I mean, maybe you live close to San Jose, but, um, you know, install it or what would you say? OK, so a, a good question there. So th so the question is, Deborah, when you bought that prefab kit in San Jose, uh, did they did they recommend a good contractor to put it together for you? You know, and if uh, if so, so or did you find someone? 
So that's a good question. So anyway, so, you know, how do you know when you found your perfect slice of paradise? Well, it kind of goes back to what we were saying, you know, after you've been there a while and you've rented and, and, and you've gotten to where, you know, uh, realize that renting is going to be very, very different because you can, you, you can't control the environment that much, but at least you find out that the altitude is temporary right. though. It yeah, gives you, renting you, you is, can yeah, renting recon. Is temporary. You can get information about an area. You, you've got to rent to get your recon, get the info, right? Mm -hmm. But then once you find out the area is good is, in other words, what we're trying to say is don't, don't say, nope, not living here because you got 15 barking dogs and, and 10 roosters. Okay. You're trying to find out is that area, is it close enough to your hospitals? Is it close to the beach? If that's what you want, you know, that you like that area. Then you can start finding for that piece of property that's maybe a hectare. And if you own a hectare, well, that's two and a half acres. You can have a house in the middle and that way you don't have all of that noise. You can control your environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's so, so easy um, to look around. So anyway, uh, hey, folks, yeah. let me know. Uh, did and, and you enjoy let this me just podcast? Mention, they don't have uh, Jake break laws. No, they do have Jake break laws. Well, then they don't. They enforce just don't them. enforce them. <laughs> they See? don't enforce it. So if you live kind of off of the highway, uh, the main highway, realize that you're going to hear that in the you, mountains. If because you're in the they, mountains. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to that you would not know if yes. you just go look at a house. And, you know, you don't spend the night, <laughs> put it that way. Yeah, you know, because if, you know, if, if you're going to, if you're seriously about buying a house, then I would make a deal with that owner and say, look, I, I kind of like this house. Okay. I'm thinking seriously about it, but I want to, I want to, I want to rent it for a month or I want to, uh, I want to stay in it overnight for two or three nights to make sure. And I don't care if you got to put a tent in the living room, uh, stay in the house because, you know, one place we lived at. We went to go uh, visit it. It was just, oh, I mean, it's like 10 o'clock. It was quiet. It was peaceful. This is such a great place. We rented it the first morning at 5 o'clock. This guy had 10 dogs out there, and his dogs had anxiety. Every time he would leave out at 5 o'clock in the morning, all the dogs would bark for the yeah. next two hours. Yeah, that was bad. That was really <laughs> bad. So you, you, you definitely have to. You know, spend some time there. Go early in the morning. Try different times of the day because it is very, very different. So, uh, okay. and Deborah answered that question and said, uh, uh, no, they manufacture in San Jose. They towed it down on trucks uh, to to her place in, in Ochacal. So it must have been kind of small. I think someone said that it was, uh, yeah, it says it was very small, like a shipping container. So they could put okay. it together on site, put it on a truck, ship it down there, drop it off. Hey, thanks so much uh, for giving us that info. Uh, and she says she did find a builder who does building uh, with something or another. But hey, hey, thank you so much. So it was just very much like a shipping container. Hey, uh, we're already at an hour. Any last minute questions before we call it a show? And hey, put some, you know, give me some comments. And look, you can really support this channel a lot by uh, always liking it subscribing uh, after the podcast is over, put your comments underneath the actual video or YouTube's kind of changing some things now. I think now it's off on the side, but put your comments in there. Give us some feedback and, and that'll help to kind of push it out there. The algorithm will see that it's getting a lot of engagement. So let us know. Uh, yeah. What did you enjoy about this podcast and what would you like to hear more of next time? Yeah. Remember that house we rented that uh, was by the, the cattle farm? And they, our house was oh my right gosh. next to the the place that they, they would, would load up the put cows. them. Yeah, like um, uh, the little corral. It was the corral so that they could load up the cows. And like every week, they were putting cows in that corral, and those cows would moo and moo. Well, and they moo. would they and, would move those cows yeah. into there, and they would be there a day or two. Okay, and of course, they were in this tiny environment, out of their usual location. Yeah, probably away so, from their mama or away uh, from whatever. Uh, Oh, my yeah. gosh, that and was a was, nightmare. It was also, it was depressing to me because they sound like they were. It's like they knew they were going to the yeah, butcher shop. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. All right. Hey, folks, I'll let you go on that. Hey, like, subscribe, thumbs up. Greatly appreciate all of you and can't wait to see you next Sunday on the Unbridled Living in Costa Rica podcast.